Frankie Fiber. And my name is Fiona Fiber. And together we are the Fiber Friends. We're so glad that you could join us for today's program. It's summer reading time and at the Anaheim Public Library, and this is our STEAM adventure. And today, during our STEAM adventure, you are entering the Origami Lab. And we're gonna do a bunch of stuff with origami today, a couple of different projects, because guess what? It's summer reading program, and there's all kinds of fun stuff to look at and do online with us, because it's from June 15th until August 8th. And what else can we do for our summer reading program? You have to get a brochure and find out. Yeah, <laughs> and make sure you're logging your reading online so you can get into the raffle for different prizes all summer long. So are we ready to start our program? Let's get started. All right, everyone. So we're going to get started on our paper boat experiment. This is the first project we're going to be learning how to fold and to do so we can learn more about science and how things float. So it's going to be really fun. The first step in our paper boat experiment is to, of course, make a paper boat. So your paper boat's gonna look like this. And the cool thing about it is, as long as you have a piece of paper that looks like a rectangle, this one's eight and a half by 11, but it could be smaller. As long as it's in the shape of a rectangle, that's what we need to fold. All right, so the first step in folding our paper boat is we're gonna fold the paper in half. All right, so you're gonna take this side and fold it over to the other. And I like to call this hamburger style um, because it kind of looks like a hamburger, right? You got the top bun and the bottom bun. Like that. So once you fold it, um, you're gonna turn the paper and make sure that you have it where the side is closed. So there's a side that's open like this, and there's a side that's closed that should be the top. Uh, once you get that top folded side in your hand, you're gonna fold each corner towards the middle. So just go ahead and grab that. Grab the other side, and you're gonna kind of fold it. And that already looks sort of like the top of a, of a boat. And just make sure to push it down so it stays that way. So now your paper should look like this. Right, once you've done that step, you're gonna, you'll see at the bottom of your paper, there's two flaps, one in the front and one in the back. You're gonna fold both of those towards the top corner of the boat. So, Fold it up and push it down with your boat. And then fold it up again and push it down. You might think you're done now because it kind of looks like a boat, but you're not quite done. We're going to do a few more steps to get it looking like this. Um, so you're going to open up the bottom flap again and fold this little corner up towards the bottom of the boat. So you make like another little triangle basically. And you're gonna do that for all four corners. So you're gonna fold that one up. We'll push back up our little flap, flip over our boat, and do the same thing again. So a little corner, there's a top, and a little corner, there's a top. And we're gonna push this back up again. All right, so now you have kind of what looks like a triangle. Then once you get to that step, this is kind of the fun part. Um, you get to open up the middle like this, and you get to push it down like that. So it kind of looks like a diamond. So I'll do that one more time just so you can catch it. So you have your triangle. You're gonna push your hand in the middle. You kind of pull apart the two sides and push it down so it looks kind of like a little diamond. All right, and then once you get to that step, you're gonna grab the end where it's open, so it kind of looks like <laughs> a little mouth or something. Um, you're gonna grab that end and fold one side up like that. And you're gonna do the same on the other side. So go ahead and flip it, and pull that side up again. All right, we're almost done. All right, so now you'll have what looks like this. And then you have your two little flaps and you're gonna kind of pull those flaps out to make your boat. So go ahead and pull them like that. And it might be a little hard at first. Um, and then once you do that, you're gonna kind of push in the boat and fold it over. And now you have your paper boat. And you can kind of push up the middle a little bit just to make it stand up. And it looks just 
like that. And we're gonna need a two for this experiment. So go ahead and pause the video if you want, make both of your boats, and get ready for an experiment. All right, so the next step is we're gonna do our experiment. But before we put our boats into our buckets of water, um, I've assigned Frankie to be the timer for this Yay. experiment. Thanks, Fiona. I get to be the timer, which means I'm gonna help us figure out how long each boat floats for because I'm going to use a stopwatch. And for those of you at home, you may have somebody in your family that has like a smartphone with a stopwatch on it so you can ask if they can help you your timer. You can also look up on a computer at home. You can use the internet to search stopwatch and a stopwatch will pop up. You can also use the time by looking at a clock. If you have a manual clock with the arm that ticks, you can count the seconds. Or you can be a timer by just counting the numbers out loud. So you can say like 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000 until the boats sink. And Frankie's also going to be the person writing down our observation, which is the next step that you'll find in your steam kit. So do you want to show them what that looks like? I do. So the observation, that is what actually happened. So you're going to look at the boats and see how long did they actually float for with the rocks and without the rocks. And also, if you don't have the kit at home, like Fiona Fiber was saying, you can just write down your observations on any paper that you have around. So you don't need the kit or the worksheet to join with us today for this program. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Yes. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna place our boats into the water. So the key part to this is you wanna make sure that you place the boats in the water at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is hold each one at the top and I'm gonna place them into the boat. And right as I do that, Frankie's gonna start the timer so we know exactly how much time it takes before each of them uh, sinks. Okay, I'm gonna count down from three. Three, two, one. Starting. I've started the stopwatch. Let's see what happens. What are we observing? Whoa. They are both floating. The one with the rocks. Ooh, I see it getting a little more wet. It's kind of soaking up the water. This one really isn't changing that much. And this one, I noticed that when you drop the boat in the water, it's a little rockier with the rocks. Oh. And I wonder if it's because the extra weight makes the boat move a little more? This is, yeah. That it, one's so still. Yeah, it's not even really that wet yet. Wow. So it might take a while. So let's see, right here it says, the boat without rocks. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write down, very still. And then the boat with the rocks, I'm gonna write down a lot more movement. What else do we observe? It's, a, it's more wet. Yeah, more wet. And it looks like the water is getting closer to the top. It's been four minutes and 21 seconds. Oh my gosh, it's getting closer. There's a lot of water inside of the boat. Can you see it at home? How's your boat doing? Is it? Oh my god! Oh, there it goes! There it goes! It's insane! At so, 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Oh my gosh. That took way longer than we thought it would take. Hi everybody, just checking in again. It's been 8 minutes and 6 seconds, and the paper boat that Fiona Fiber made is still floating. So we're keeping track of it here. And we're gonna take a little intermission to show you how to make another really awesome steam project with origami today. All right, so now we're gonna start our second project of today's program, which is how to make a cube. Does anybody know how many sides a cube has? That's a good math problem to solve. Let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six sides to a cube. So make sure you remember that because you're gonna have to come up with six different ideas. But first, let's figure out how to make one. This is a small cube. We're gonna figure out how to make a cube using origami sized paper. So you can use any size paper as long as it's a square. 
If you don't have square or origami paper at home, and if you have just printer size paper or a rectangle, you can make it into a square by taking one of the corners all the way until the corner and the edge is parallel with the paper's edge. So we're gonna fold it down and you can see this extra flap right here. This is the flap that you'll cut off because then once you cut this off, you'll have a square. So if you don't have square paper, that's a way that you can make square paper very easily. So the first step, you're gonna need six sheets of origami paper. And you can have them in all different colors. Gonna make it fun. It's not mandatory, but if you'd like, each side of your cube is gonna be made with a different sheet of origami paper. The first step is to take your sheet of paper and fold it in half down the middle. And once you have the middle line folded, you're going to do that again on the other side. So you're going to rotate your paper once and fold it in the middle again. The goal is to get two lines that intersect each other. So you have four equal squares. So now pay close attention to the line in the middle because we're going to take the paper's edge and fold the edge to meet this middle line that we've created from our fold. And you're going to leave that here and you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to take this edge of the paper and you're going to fold it so it meets right in the middle and fold it down. You'll see you have the fold still in the middle of this shape. So you're gonna take each edge on the top and on the bottom. So let's do the top edge first. You're gonna fold the top edge, all the edges together, and you're gonna fold them down to meet this middle line right here. Just like that. So you can flip it around because you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. So this edge of the paper, the top edges, you're gonna fold them down to meet in the middle. So we're gonna do lots of middle, middle mark meets. <laughs> okay, so this is the shape that you're gonna to wanna to have. And this is gonna be one side of your cube. So you can see right here, this could be the side, the top, the bottom. But what we're gonna do is fold this six times. So making a cube is great practice with multiplying because you are going to have to make six identical pieces that are going to become the six identical sized sides of your cube. So I hope that you have all six of your sides folded. So here they are all identical all multipliers of the same folded shape. So what we're gonna do to start building our cube is we're gonna decide, or you're gonna decide, which color or which piece of paper you want as your bottom. And this won't really matter if all of your papers are the same color, but just decide, okay, this one is gonna be the bottom of my cube. So we're gonna place it on the floor like this. And the way we build the cube is you're gonna take your second piece of paper and you're, gonna, you're going to place it just like so. And if you want, you can actually begin to tape it down if you want your cube to stay very sturdy. This is optional, you don't have to use tape, but as you can see, I have one side, two sides of my cube. So I'm gonna place the second half second side of my cube by placing this bottom panel flat on the bottom. And if I put both of the sides of the cube down, you'll see that really what's happening 
is each panel is meeting up together like this. And when the sides are folded up, I now have three sides of my cube done. So let's keep going. Next, I'm going to start another side. And just to make it easier, because I do have tape, I'm gonna tape the tops together too. So that way, the, the form kind of helps, helps stay. And let's see, so this panel, we're gonna wanna make sure it stays inside. And these two panels are gonna get tucked inside. So I'll do this side first so it's easier to see. But we're gonna tuck the panel in. it's a little tricky and you kind of have to wiggle it in but once it's there it's good to go so you can see wow look our, our cube is becoming its final form we have one two three four sides of our cube ready this is a really great project to think about engineering and how shapes and 3d models are built Okay, so this is a side that needs a solid cube panel. So we're going to tuck this piece of paper in right here on this little, little slit. You can see there's like a slot, this space. So we're going to slide it through right there. And so that way this color paper becomes the finished side. Last side we need is the top. So we're going to take our last piece of paper, so go ahead and take your last folded piece, your sixth piece, so you're going to slide it in right till the folded edge meets the, the, the hard edge. So last time, here we go, we're going to find the space and we're going to just slide it in like that. And check it out, you have a cube! If you want this cube to last longer, um, I would suggest taping the edges where they meet. You can also glue it, but you can use any kind of tape really. But if you do have clear scotch tape, I want to encourage you to tape the edges together because this cube has a lot of potential. And we're gonna actually invite you to use this cube as a way to play a game this summer. So I'm gonna tape a few more edges and then I'm gonna invite Fiona Fiber to help me think of some, some ideas on how to use this cube to play our summer game. Yay, you did it! So cool, what are you gonna do with it? Well, this is what I called Gio before. I was hoping you could help me come up with some ideas because as we talked about earlier, this cube has six different sides to it. So I was hoping that we could write like something on each side of the cube that can give us an idea of how we can like move around and like do something fun this summer. Like if we're just kind of like sitting around and don't really know what to do, we can take the cube out and toss it. Ooh. And whatever it lands on, like that's an idea of something we can do to get moving. Because at the library, we love literacy of all kinds. And when we exercise and when we learn how to move our bodies, that's something that's called physical literacy. So we want everybody to be physically literate too. Ooh, I love getting physical. Yay! Okay, so hmm, I have an idea. I'm gonna write one. And if I toss it to you, can you help me with writing an idea on one of the sides too? Yeah, I have one in mind. Okay, cool. Okay, so the one that I'm going to do, I'm going to write down five, five jumping jacks. Okay, so I'm going to pass it to you. Ready? Got it. Yay. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to write. I'm going to write five minutes of free dance. That sounds awesome. All right, so we 
have all of our ideas on all six sides of our cubes and they're all different and super fun. We're gonna actually do this right now. Let's toss it back and forth and then we'll toss it on the table and we'll see what it lands on. And, oh, Ooh, what does it say? It says say five animal sounds and do five animal motions. Do you wanna start? Sure. Okay. The first one for me that I think of is lion. So roar, like a lion. Okay, one that I can think of is a snake. So put your arms on your side and hold your head up in yoga. It's like a pose called cobra. Stretch out your spine. Ooh, I think the next one I'm gonna do is a cat. But I'm gonna do when a cat is like really tired and cozy. So you're just gonna say meow, meow. And I'm gonna squeeze my hands together, meow. Oh, I like that one. I wanna Ooh. stay in this yeah. one. It's really cozy. Oh, what should we pick for our last one, Frankie? It's just one more animal, right? Five animals is the fifth one. <gasps> Alligator! so long it took actually 46 minutes and four seconds for my boat to sink um, so now that they're both sunk we're gonna write our conclusions to see how that happened so do you want to start Vicky by talking about the boat with rocks sure yeah thanks Fiona so as you might remember the boat with the rocks didn't float for that long it actually only floated for four minutes and 38 seconds so part of our conclusion is writing down facts of observation as to why. So there's a because here. So it says, my boat with rock floated for four minutes and 38 seconds because, and for my conclusion, I am going to conclude that it only floated for that long because it was heavier. That's a good observation, Frankie. I'm gonna do my conclusion. Um, based on the observations we had. So, my boat without rocks floated for 46 minutes and four seconds. Because, hmm, because it was light and it soaked up the water slower. So, now, I think we're finished with our experiment, right? Yeah. All right, so in today's experiment, we did our hypothesis, which means we guess what, what might happen after the experiment was over based on the information that we had. We also did our observation, which means we looked at what happened when we put the rocks in the boat versus when we had the boat without the rocks. And then finally, we did our conclusion which means we, based on all the things we observed, we were able to figure out what happened and why it happened. We hope you all had fun experimenting with us, but before you go, we have a very special origami challenge for you. One of the many fun things about origami is that you can really experiment with scale. So that means you can make things that are the same shape at different sizes. So we want to invite all of you at home to experiment with scale when you do origami. What's the biggest piece of paper you can find? And what's the biggest origami shape you can make out of it? And can you find a smaller paper and make the exact same shape so you can compare and contrast how they look, maybe how they feel, and how they move? Oh my gosh, Frankie, that was so much fun! Yeah, I agree, Fiona. Thank you to everybody at home who tuned in today for our program, Origami Lab, where we learned a bunch of stuff about origami, how to experiment, and do steam. 
Um, so also, if anybody at home wants to learn more about origami, you can check out a bunch of origami books with the Anaheim Public Library through our curbside service. And when you get your books during curbside, you're gonna see this really awesome brochure that mentions all of the really fantastic summer reading programs that we have this summer, especially for all of you. And if you can't pick up the books, you can just go to anaheim.net slash summer reading and all of the information about any of the upcoming programs that you'll find on Facebook or Instagram will be right there. Um, and we hope that you'll tune in for more of our programs. Thank you for joining us today. Thank we'll you see so you next much. time.